A lot of people track their physical health, but how many of us actively track and measure our brain and mental health? Peter Drucker said it best, you cannot improve what you cannot measure. So if we want better brain and mental health, it's vitally important to track and measure our progress in this area. Now you're probably wondering, how do you track your mental health? Many people find that writing a daily mood journal is very helpful to them. I'm not personally a big journaling fan, so I do this more on a weekly to monthly basis. And it also helps me to frame it in a more longer term frame of how things are affecting my mood. So I'll take notes of things that I did in that time frame or major events that happened and how they affected me emotionally. A concept that I find even more helpful is simply just paying attention to and being more aware of the things that I do on a regular basis that can affect my mental health and brain health. And I do my best to frame this in a long-term mindset. So I share three examples in this video so that you have a better understanding of what I mean. The first example, a few years ago, I began to audit and track how alcohol affected me mentally. And as a consequence of tracking my alcohol intake, I began to realize that whenever I did drink alcohol, it may make me feel better emotionally in the short term, but the next day and the next couple of days, I've actually felt like crap, probably partly thanks to having Asian genes, so I don't have alcohol dehydrogenase, the enzyme that breaks alcohol down um, in as high quantity as other people. And very often after drinking, the next day I would very much regret it. I noticed that whenever I drank alcohol on a regular basis, I actually was more depressed so I had lower mood. And I later came to the realization that I simply functioned better and felt better when I didn't drink alcohol. All this was only possible because I tracked my alcohol intake and linked it to how I was feeling emotionally. Needless to say, I've now stopped drinking alcohol and I'm now much happier overall as a result. I'm not saying that you have to stop drinking alcohol here. I'm simply sharing a personal example of what has worked for me. Something that I've learned during my experience as a doctor is that different people can have different reactions to different things. What works for one person may not necessarily work for another. So in the example of medicine, one medication may have huge benefits to one patient, may have no effects on another patient, and for a third patient, may even have detrimental effects with side effects. What works for one person may not necessarily work for another. And this is especially important when we're talking about something as complex and and nuanced as brain and mental health. Thanks to modern research, we now know that neuroplasticity is very much real. This is our brain's ability to adapt and change, mainly in response to experience. So given that there are almost 8 billion people in the world as of the last count, it shouldn't be a surprise that with so many different people with various backgrounds, life experiences, that our brains are also wired slightly differently. So the key point that I'm trying to get across here is to figure out what works for you personally. The second thing that I learned from tracking my mental health is that saying yes simply to please others was having a negative impact on my mood, especially in the long term. Saying yes felt more comfortable in the moment, but often in the long term I would regret agreeing to so many different things. Learning to prioritize my own mental health and say no more often and be more comfortable in doing this has been one of the best lessons of my life and I simply wish that I had learned this lesson sooner. The third example of tracking my mental health is in exercise. I realized that whenever I exercised on a regular basis, I would feel far better emotionally than the periods that I didn't. This realization now forces me to go to the gym even when I don't feel like it or I don't feel motivated to go because this understanding of my long-term happiness and how it's going to make me feel emotionally really pushes me to get off my butt and go to the gym. I share these three examples to show and express to you how tracking your mental health can have a huge benefit to your overall happiness levels. And I highly encourage you to track how you feel emotionally and how different things can impact on your mood. Spend time auditing what different things in your life affect your mood. Maybe you personally enjoy alcohol and it makes you happy, but the only way to know for sure is to track on a weekly to monthly basis. On the internet and social media especially, there's plenty of people who are willing to give advice to lots of people. But remember that we as humans are all slightly different in how our brains are wired, so it's important to take personal responsibility in figuring out what works for you. A key to great brain and mental health 
is to develop your self-awareness and understanding in what works for you personally and to call yourself out when something that you do on a regular basis actually has a detrimental effect to your mental health on the long-term scale and on the other side to continue doing the things that help your mood on a long-term scale. I've tried not to give blanket advice in this video but to explain the deeper concepts that you can use to track and improve your mental health. Some other things that are scientifically shown to impact on your mood are diet, sleep, sun exposure and social interactions. So be extra aware of how these different things affect you mentally. If you found this video helpful, give the like button some love. Subscribe for more brain content. Comment below what activities help your mental health to share some ideas for other people to try. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you guys in the next video.